Hello guys, today I want to present to you another new course on Laravel Daily and this is so controversial and weird and unnatural that I'm very excited about. This is PHP for Laravel developers. Sounds weird, I know, right? But it actually solves a real problem that I've encountered over years of participating in Laravel community, which is this. So recently tweeted my version of a classical XKCD comic after years of answering the questions like, I'm using this and that package or this or that Laravel function, but it doesn't work for me how to debug. So people who are using Laravel, for example, as a framework often learn that as the first language without really learning PHP underneath. And fun fact, it is quite possible. So you can start creating Laravel projects without knowing PHP. And this year I've noticed the next level of that, which is filament, which is another layer on top of Laravel and Livewire, which allows you to create full admin panels with abstraction of using just filament with a little bit of Livewire if you need, without thinking about PHP at all, which is cool until it's not. So then these people, if they want to debug something or restructure something or do something custom, then they struggle. So I realized there are fundamental topics that I can create course about. Kind of like missing gaps in PHP knowledge that are useful in Laravel projects. Because fun fact, even the most popular course on Laravel daily is how to structure Laravel projects. And most of the answers about the structure is about object-oriented programming, how to structure classes, their dependencies, and stuff like that, which is actually PHP. So this course consists of kind of two big parts. First is object-oriented programming, OOP, classical stuff, but with Laravel examples. And in this video, I'll read you a few of them. And then random various PHP features used in Laravel projects, like callback functions, ternary operators, types, which became a huge thing in Laravel 10, exceptions, composer thing, and more syntax examples as a bonus. And this is, by the way, not a PHP 101 for beginners, no. It's specifically tailored for Laravel developers. And ironically, Laravel is actually a prerequisite, a required thing to know before taking this course. But anyway, let me read the first few lessons and maybe you will fill some of the missing gaps in your OOP knowledge in Laravel. The first example is a typical fresh new Laravel model, this one. Do you fully understand what is extends model and what is use has factory and what is the difference between them? To understand the extends model, we need to take a look at that model class, which is inside of the vendor folder in Laravel core, which is a class with a lot of properties and methods. It's actually a huge class, but for example, protected table per page and function all. You use all of them or some of them in your eloquent models, right? So for example, if you do make model post, you can do post all. So that function comes from the parent class of eloquent model. But that extends means that you can override some of those features in your child class. So for example, in your model post, you can change the table you're working with or you can change the pagination for your specific model, which would overwrite the default value of 15 to your 50. And this is why often it's very beneficial to click in your PHP Storm or your IDE on the class that is extended. And then you would see the functionality, the methods and properties that you can use in your child class to override some of the behaviors. The next topic is use has factory, which is actually a trait. That has factory trait. It also comes from Laravel core. It's quite simple, actually. It has only one method of factory. But the thing is that for your eloquent models, if you want to generate some records, you can do user factory 10 create, for example, or post factory 20 create something like this. So to be able to use that factory in any of your Laravel models, you use that trait. That trait is kind of a piece of code installable in your eloquent models, in those models that you pick. By default, actually Laravel adds that to every eloquent model, but you can choose whether to add it or not. So your eloquent model doesn't actually extend any factory behavior, but it adds the factory behavior as a trait along with other traits possibly. So this is example how you would add traits. And this is an example in the model itself in the core, what other traits are added into the model. So I hope you get the difference between extends with parent child relationships with so called inheritance versus traits, which are just pieces of code added to the class. 
The next concept that you must understand in object-oriented programming, and this comes from another lesson in the course, I will kind of shoot the excerpts of various topics, is multi-level extents, multi-level inheritance. It's kind of like parent, children, and grandchildren. And this is an example from Laravel core itself. We have a user model, default user model of Laravel, which extends model. And that user class is not your user class in app models. This is actually a core class in Laravel vendor in here. But then in your model, you extend that class. And this is actually app models user file generated by default with Laravel. And to avoid collision, it adds alias to that core class, which is also called user. So it is renamed to authenticatable and extends that authenticatable. So what it means that you have a hierarchy of model class, then extended by a user class, and then extended by your public model user class. And this is the fundamentals of all the structure in Laravel, that your class may extend another class, that extends another class, and sometimes you need to go three or four levels deep to find some behavior that you can customize in your public class. And the final topic in this lesson, let's talk about static methods. So when you're calling user all here, do you understand that it's a static method? This is actually its source in the model, which you already have seen in this video earlier. That static method, as many static methods in Laravel and in general in PHP, are basically just shortcuts to a non-static method under the hood. So it allows us to call model all instead of doing something like this every time. But the main point is that static method doesn't really depend on specific object of that class. So we're not working with specific user, we're just working with general behavior of a user class and get some method from that, like get all users. But if you're working with a specific user, for example, like this, you cannot call a static class here because we're working with specific user object and not just static class. And this is useful if you create, for example, a Laravel service, which is just a fancy word of a helper class related to some user, for example, or some post service, user service, some class that you offload the behavior to from your controller. So one of the choices for you is to create static methods like this. So you just pass user data and then in your controller, you call that like this. You don't need to create that object of user service. You just call the class store and that's it. And some developers would disagree with that, that you need to have dependency injection or parameter as a service here in the controller method, which is fine and also possible, but it's not necessary if your class of service and that method don't depend on any external state of the user, of the specific user object. A counter example would be if that user service depends on something, like for example, you create a user service object with some global parameter, like company name. You need to create a user for a specific company. And then that method cannot be static anymore because for that service, we need a parameter. We need to create the object of user service passing the parameter. It may be passed here or in other places, but I want you to understand the whole idea when static methods are fine and when they just don't work. So yeah, these are just a few topics from the course about OOP and general PHP for Laravel developers. I will link the full course in the description below and I hope it will help some of you fill in the missing gaps about what PHP functions are used in Laravel and how you can benefit them for extending and maintaining your Laravel projects. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.